Anyway, um, so the, the lab that I'm going to work in this semester actually has some really interesting things that I uh, would like to work with. So, for example, there's a, a grad student that is working on this whole thing with um, like a, an adaptive narrative. So, for example, like in Mass Effect where you have different things change based on which characters you allow to live um, or, well, which ones you save and which ones you don't save. Um, that is essentially kind of like an adaptive narrative. However, that isn't really as in-depth as we're trying, or, well, as they're trying to make it and as I would like to try to make it as well. So, what I would prefer to have is, say, a game where, depending on where you are or what you have done like a new character arises and comes up into play so like if you are going around and doing quests that are saving a whole ton of people all of a sudden out of nowhere you now have an enemy like a, a full-blown antagonist that has come out from the shadows and that's kind of like the thing and they would be different based on what you've done and then your choices in the game like preferably things like that we could make almost universal so if you wanted to you know throw cheese at somebody like in the ASDF movies or like you would have a specific enemy that you would fight or if you wanted to go around and I don't know like marry every single woman in town even though I don't know I mean I'm not sure if we would have polygamy or not in the thing we were doing but if we did, if you wanted to go around and marry every single person in town, some like handsome dude would be your antagonist. Like the the other like premium bachelor would come up and he's like, "I'm gonna steal all your women." Anyway, that's completely misogynistic and such. Um, is that the right word? I think it is. Anyway, it's derogatory towards women. That's the big thing. But if that was perhaps a story that was being made. It could be done, and people would be happy, and, you know, it would change based on you know, what you were doing and, you know, what kind of character you're playing, who you are, your personality, um, what age you are, the amount of sugar that you had in the morning. No, I'm just kidding about all that at the end. But anyway, so, like, it would change based on a whole ton of different factors. And so you could then use those... Um, like those different elements to create a game that changes based on different events that happen like that the user basically facilitates um, I know that's a lot of like just, just jargon that you probably don't necessarily care about but that is actually what I'm looking into doing and I really really love that idea like creating a game that can essentially adapt to any situation that you could ever possibly think of and then be used to like just generate new situations for every single player and I mean that's like people always claim that they can do that or like there are a lot of games that claim that they're like it's a different experience for everyone and to a certain extent it is I mean it's not like every single person has the same exact gameplay experience in every game it's not really possible because everybody has the different play styles and they have their different methods of going about solving problems but there really isn't any specific way of saying, yes, I can do this and you will do the exact same thing. I mean, you can't do that. But then the opposite side of that is you always have like some kind of commonality between different types of gameplay and like who or how somebody plays a game and what they do in that game. So, I mean, there's there's never a guarantee that somebody will like be uh, it, like it'll, it'll be like the snowflake uh, snowflake effect there's no guarantee that that will actually occur in gameplay it's really more you just have to come up with a ton of different situations and hope that nobody really chooses the same exact path every time um and it's to the like the the goal is to make something so expansive that you really never run out of options to go back and try something new or go and have some special like item or something that you may not have had the first time you went through but you have now 
that so that it will change the game that you even play it, and even if you do the exact same stuff throughout. So that's like the goal, the overall goal. But that's um, pretty far off in the future, as far as I'm concerned. Um, but right now, I'm gonna hopefully be working alongside one of the grad students on one of his games and it's more so about adaptive personality um, and trying to get the game to realize what the player is playing as or like their their play style and then find ways to make the game more interesting for them so if you were somebody that just liked puzzles but didn't care anything about platforming then it would maybe recognize that based on the the quest that you go and choose and then suggest for you or essentially like tailor quests to be only puzzle things without any platforming. Um, so that's kind of what we're working on or what I hope to be working on in the near future. And so I think that's also really in interesting and cool to, you know, have a game just learn based on a few interactions with some random AI and the player, what exactly the player likes and wants to do. It's really interesting. And so that's uh, hopefully what I'll be getting into. But until then, of course, I will continue to make videos and uh, be around for all of you people because I love you. And that was just nowhere close to being hit by me. Anyway, um, oh, my ear itches. It's, uh, ah. Ha <laughs> ha that was a ball. Excuse me. Anyway, I am having all sorts of bodily issues at the moment, as you can most likely tell. Yeah. Oh, and so what I would like to actually do is I'd like to thank everybody that has subscribed um, in the past few weeks, uh, mainly because I haven't been able to keep up with actually going to everybody's channel and or page and saying, hey, thanks for subscribing. So... One of the things that I've I've tried to do um, pretty much for everybody that subscribed was go through and say, hey, you know, I really um, appreciate your subscribe. And if you want to see anything specific done, you know, just shoot, shoot me a message or post a comment, something like that. Um, and so I haven't been able to do that the past few weeks due to all my other commitments. But, you know, if there is perhaps something that any of you want to see and, and you may be new, just go ahead and, you know, comment it. Or, um, if there was, you know, I mean, I wasn't able to comment on everybody's and say thank you. That's, that's the main reason that I wanted to say, like, saying thank you now. Um, but anyway, and I just realized that I was rambling through the middle of that video. I actually wanted to, uh, stop there for a second. But anyway, I'll probably go back and post and be like, and so that's the end of this video. If you want to continue on the next one, just continue on the playlist and it'll be there. Yay! Third baseman missed it. So we get on base. Anyway, this is a, a long time for me to be talking, and it's almost 10 o'clock, and I have an early morning class, and even though I may uh, be weak in the sense that I like to go to bed early for classes, I do it, and I am happy, however, right now I'm tired, and uh, <laughs> I'm about to, to crash, unfortunately, because I mean, I need, to, I need to continue, I need to be there for my team. I need to support them in their goal towards, uh, or in their, uh, that the, the uh, my words, they just don't, they don't work, and I need to support them in their journey to become the top dogs of the world and be the rockets that have blasted off in front of everyone else, but actually won. Anyway, uh, there we go. There we go, Ahmed. That's, that's a good, uh, good first baseman. Oh my gosh, I know, this is probably terrible commentary at this point. I really probably shouldn't be recording, but like I said, I need to record something because it needs to go out and you guys need to enjoy it and have a good time and be like, oh yeah, awesome, so cool, there's like a video recording and no, 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 yeah, don't know how Keisha caught that, but she caught it and there we go, there's another one down. And let's go ahead and corkscrew this guy because uh, we need to screw him. But that was a ball, so we didn't screw him. Anyway. We're just going to heat things up, and I'm just, it's like so many sexual innu innuendos right there. Going to screw the guy, heat things up. Anyway, he's out, so it doesn't matter. And um, now we're going to go back to the next inning, which is the fifth, I believe. Yes, it is. Uh, unfortunately, though, we are not 
in the home team, so we actually have to wait and actually play the uh, entire sixth inning, which is going to be slightly annoying, honestly, because, like I said, I'm tired <laughs> and I need to go to bed. Oh, uh, that was bad. Oh my gosh, my head is falling. My head, my head is falling, and it's like nodding down and dozing. But I'm going to swing and miss, sort of. I didn't really miss, but I uh, I am disappointed with my performance. And that's a ball. Yeah, that's a ball. Figured that was a ball. That's a ball. That's a ball, ball, ball. Ball, ball to the wall. Even though it's not the song. Anyway, that's going to be a strike, so might as well swing and miss. That's cool. You know, it's whatever. We're still up 2-0. I don't see us going into uh, any particular slut. What what sl slump? I meant slump, not slut. Why did I say slut? That's stupid. I'm stupid. I'm um I'm losing my mind. Someone please save me. Save me from my um my in my mind. My my pain. My tiredness. My thirty seven eight hundred. No, thirty seven thousand eight hundred seventy six frames with none dropped. Anyway, oh I was just reading the um X split recording thing with frames. Anyway. Alright, cool. We're uh, in the bottom of the fifth now. And we don't want them to get any scores. So we shall be amazing here. Ernie get it. There we go. And just toss it over to Ahmed and there we go. Where's out number one of the bottom of the fifth? And you know, it's you don't want a left, you don't want a right, you don't want a slow, you want to heat. Alright, well, he'll heat it up right up into the top, or er, the, um, it's, uh, top inside. Oh, I'm forgetting names of the pitch box places. I know it's inside and outside, and it's, uh, I think it's low and high. Anyway, that was the high, high inside. That's it, yeah, it's high inside. Anyway, that's a foul ball. So, oh gosh. I really definitely should not be recording right now. <laughs> and I'm really sorry. I'm sorry for the delays and for the bad commentary and for the loopiness that I am experiencing at the moment. And, oh yeah, I got a new car. <laughs> I'm just remembering a whole ton of stuff that happened the past, like, three weeks. So, I mean, technically I didn't really get a new car. I got a used car from my aunt but it's new to me and it's a 2005 compared to 1989 so I like it a lot and it's still a stick shift so I like it a lot like I um I don't know if anybody has or any of my viewers actually you know use a stick shift or drive automatic or even drive at all but um if you haven't driven a, an, a, a manual um you need to like it's so much fun it really is, and it keeps you more focused on the actual road, so you actually have to, you know, be aware of what you're going, or how fast you're going, and, you know, what the rotations per minute are, and, you know, where you are in relation to other cars when you're actually doing your uh, switching of gears. So it's, um, it's really good for not only, like, you know, having a, a better sense of awareness, but it also does uh, help to keep you awake, like, on long drives. Um, and then in addition to that, it's really fun because it's just so much more fun. Like, literally, you can control how you accelerate. You get to, like, do something. Like, you feel the gears click into place, and then you, like, take out the clutch and go, like, vroom, vroom. And, oh, my gosh, it is so much fun. It is so much fun compared to an automatic. So, there's uh, the words of wisdom for the day. If you have not driven an, a manual car, do so please learn before you actually get in there like have somebody that's experienced go and help you out because if you are going in there just without having any idea how to use the clutch then it could screw up a car completely um but you know it's it's not bad once you have somebody that gets you know that knows what they're doing and so it's really something that you should that everyone should try out like anyone that gets their license should try out at least a manual car because they they will change your life. Not to mention they're also cheaper, typically. I mean, they can... I'm not necessarily saying specifically like with regards to gas. Because depending on who drives it and how you drive it, they can be more or less expensive in, as far as gas. But, like, 
like the actual car itself typically comes at a lower cost because they don't have to worry about too much of the computer switching. Um, like the the whole automatic side of the car, the uh, like the computers and the uh, automated clutch doesn't have to be installed, so it's uh, a lot easier, so therefore cheaper, and it's so much more fun. So there's no reason not to get a manual car. Like really, it's it's amazing. And uh, if you don't want your c friends to take your car out, and you know that they don't know how to drive manual, it also works out pretty well. So, just a few little uh, tips there, just out of the blue, because I'm remembering stuff that has happened to me. And I did talk about my projector, right? Yeah, yeah, I did. Everybody should know about my projector anyway. I, I talk about it way too much. Anyway. Yeah, I figured that was going to happen. It doesn't matter, though, because we're in the bottom of the sixth. As long as we don't let anybody score, we are good to go. All right, Pablo's got that. Get it all the way over to first. How about we go ahead and just, you know, throw it over to second. Second, we'll throw it back over to Ahmed. And, hey there, Jacinda, how about you have the ball back? Oh, no, Ahmed, I think you need it more. And there we go. Yeah, I love that trick. That trick makes everything so much easier and um, while it is slightly cheap and could be considered cheating it um, typically ends up in my favor unfortunately as we know that doesn't always work out because it is possible for them to escape and evade my attempts but right now it's not a big deal because we just struck out number two hello number three you are going to be my third person that to will get out of this inning. And um, with you, we will also actually end the um, this little postseason playoff game. And we will go to the championships. The championships. Here we come. Because it was its best two out of three, we won two. So, we win. There's the final. Well, the super entire nation championship that's uh sounds really official anyway let's check out the scoreboard as you can see this kind of is a trend i just get like something in the first inning and then the rest is just like holding everyone off but you know i can't complain when we win so on to the dugout we win coach mr cliftron's rockets are city champs we came through a lot of adversary this season but we uh stuck together as a team said ashley webber the Rockets co-captain, the fans are the real winners here, said Pete Wheeler, choking back the tears. All city. I can't even, I can't actually read that. Oh, playoff champs. Wow. I couldn't see the off. Like, I was like, that's a P, that's an L, is a, is a what's a what? And then I was like, Gramps? Champs? I don't know, champs? Oh yeah, there we go. Anyway, and um, technically... <laughs> We could print this. Um, doesn't really do you guys too much good, necessarily. Uh, and also, I don't really think Scum has that set up. So I don't think I can uh, nowadays. But back in the day, you know, that was, uh, was a fun thing to do. You know, print out your amazing sports championship win series. Uh, awesome poster paper thing. Yeah. Because it's in the newspaper, so it's legit. Anyway. That's that. We are now on to the championships. And as you can see, it's very special. We have teams that we never saw before. Some crazy looking, amazing, different, like, teams that just came out of nowhere. Like the Crunchy Cookies, who we will be battling next. The uh, Nutty Bananas and the uh, Taste of Cheeses with Coach X. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, you can leave predictions and see who we're going to be facing in the finals if you want. I uh, I don't know. Um, personally, I, I think I might go with the Taste of Cheeses. Because, I don't know, those Nutty Bananas, they, uh, they're a little crazy. And uh, I don't think it's a good thing in this particular situation. Anyway, so the Ultra Grand Championship of the Universe. Series winners, we will be on that trophy soon enough. Until then, however, we will say goodbye. So I'd like to thank you all for watching. Sorry for all the delays in recordings and uploading and such. I hope you understand. But anyway, 
that's how things were. Hiatus is over. I'll, I will see you guys in the next one. This has been Mr. Cliff John. Signing off. Adios.